What is up enthusiasts, it is Cedar Flags here and welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we are going to be talking about the one and the only Bolliger and Mabillard, otherwise known as B&M. They are definitely one of the most diverse manufacturers out there. And what do I mean by that? Well, when you look at their portfolio, it's absolutely incredible. They make coasters of all kinds for all audiences. So today, let's talk about all of the B&M models. Fortunately, I've gotten to ride all of the B&M models, at least all of the major ones, and let me say, I think I have a good idea on where to rank them and how the coasters stand up. So talking about all the models, I do have a few honorable mentions and I'll get to that, but regardless, all of these models are absolutely incredible, so let's get right into the video. This is Cedar Flags and today, I will be ranking all of the B&M models from worst to best. So we are going to be starting off with honorable mentions, and yes, I said I have ridden all of the B&M models, but those are all of the major ones. We are going to be talking about two models that I actually have not gotten on. The first one is the B&M Family Invert. By default, I think these would easily be last place. They're not meant for the thrill seeker, they are meant for families, and I hear they are very similar to the SNS and Vacoma Family Inverts. And compared to the bigger B&M models, they are definitely inferior. But like I said, it's a kid's ride. And the other model is the Surf Coaster. Now, no one has been on the Surf Coaster because it does not exist yet. What we do know is that it's going to be their multi-launch model. It's going to focus more on low to the ground elements and launches. It's basically going to be their take on a Blitz. And I'm going to say at the optimistic side, it's going to be very forceful, have unique elements and strong airtime, be a very good take on the Blitz and be top two. Looking at the pessimistic side, it would be less forceful, be inferior, and just have okay pacing at that. This scenario would probably land this model around the 5 or 6 spot. At the number 9 spot, we have the B&M Dives. Now, I've ridden two of these, Valraven at Cedar Point and Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa. I mean, what is there else to be said? It's a one-trick pony. You go down the trot, maybe do an element or two, go into a mid-course, and do another element or two. When it comes to the trick, it's definitely a great gimmick, and it definitely attracts the GP. I could definitely see the appeal in this ride model, and I think it's a brilliant idea from the people at B&M. But as a coaster enthusiast looking for a good layout, this is definitely an inferior ride to me. Though it is still fun to get on, it's definitely not as good as the other ones leading up on this list. Coming in at the number 8 spot, we have the B&M Wing Coaster. Now I have gotten to ride all 4 B&M Wings in the United States, and I have to say, all of them have their different qualities. They are wing coasters where you sit on the side, go through some nice long drawn out elements, and maybe go through some near miss elements. I really like the gimmick of this ride, but it just doesn't feel as forceful as some other of these models. Coming in at the number 7 spot, we have the B&M Floorless Coaster. Now, leading up on this list, a lot of these models are going to have very similar layouts, and they're going to be interchangeable. And some of these might just be based on what kind of trains that they have. More specifically, these trains are B&M floorless trains, which are trains where you sit down, but you are elevated, so there is no floor beneath you. The only thing that's beneath your feet is the track, and it's truly a surreal experience. Though the floorless coasters I have ridden by B&M haven't necessarily been the best. Though I have to say Kraken and Dominator are phenomenal rides, a ride like Rougarou just doesn't have that quality that those other rides do. But looking at some other floorless coasters I have not gotten the opportunity to get on, like Superman at Fiesta, that ride looks absolutely insane. Coming in at the number 6 spot, take a B&M floorless coaster, add a floor, and stand up on it. That is the B&M stand up. Yes, it's pretty self explanatory, but it is such a cool gimmick. And I know this is a very unpopular opinion, most enthusiasts would probably put this in dead last, but fortunately for me, I don't find this ride that uncomfortable. I've gotten to ride both Mantis at Cedar Point and Vortex at Carowinds, and I enjoyed my time on both of those rides. Now, I don't really ride these for the forces, but instead, I ride them for the fact that, hey, I'm standing up on a roller coaster, and it's pretty rare to see one of these nowadays, so if you see one, I definitely would get on it. Coming in at the number 5 spot, we have the B&M Flyer, and unlike all of the other ones I've mentioned so far, this one you are actually under the track in a flying position. I've gotten to ride two of these, Manta at SeaWorld Orlando and Superman at Six Flags Great America. 
and both of these rides really blew me away. Now, most of the ride you get a great sensation of flying, you put your arms out, and it truly is a fun experience, but the marquee part of this ride is definitely the pretzel loop. Especially if you're sitting in the back, you will get yanked over and it feels like the force of everything is pushing upon you. I still enjoy putting my arms out and gliding through the second half of a B&M flyer. Now coming in at the number 4 spot, we have, in my opinion, a better version of the B&M Floorless. Now like I talked about the B&M Floorless, they are floorless rides with general B&M layouts. So let's go to another similar one. It is the B&M Sit Down. Now I've gotten to ride two of these and it was Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa and Hulk at Islands of Adventure. And I just think both of these rides are better than the average floorless. Because, well, in my opinion they're a lot more forceful. I don't know why this is, but the layouts of Kumba and Hulk just fly through the whole thing. Just from start to finish, it is non-stop, and your legs are numb throughout the whole experience. Now, is there a better b and looping model? Yes, in my personal opinion, I think the invert is superior. At the number 3 spot, the B&M inverts are just, well, all of these looping models but cranked up to 11. Now, you have these models where you are above the track, but imagine how much snappier it would be if you are below the track. The transitions are snappier, it is tighter, the loops are smaller, so the positive G's are even higher. Yes, I've gotten to ride some incredible B&M inverts, especially rides like Montu and Banshee. And these looping rides that are inverted are easily the most forceful rides by B&M. The transitions are fast, and when you are going over those loops and elements, you are just getting absolutely pulled over, and it feels like a completely different experience and a much better experience than some of the other sit-down rides. Wow models number 9 through number 3 are more inversion based, models 2 through 1 are going to be more airtime based. And starting off at the number 2 spot, we are going to go to the B&M Hyper. Man, do I love myself a good B&M Hyper. Starting off in the late 90s, these rides were very revolutionary at the time, and still a big pick for parks all over the world. You could find these absolutely everywhere. And they are known for their back-to-back -back massive airtime camelbacks that give some of the greatest floater airtime on the planet. And rides like Diamondback at Kings Island or Candemonium at Hershey Park are great examples of this. When you go over those camelbacks, you just float out of your seat for what seems to be an eternity. And it just feels glorious. Now the reason I have this at number 2, even though I do like the layouts of these better than the number 1 spot, is that they are more repetitive and more unoriginal. So, what is at the number one spot that could beat out the B&M Hyper? Well, the B&M Giga. Make a B&M Hyper bigger and put some more elements on it. Look at the layouts of Fury 325 and Diamondback. Yeah, sure, Diamondback has more airtime, but Fury 325 has much more variety. Instead of just airtime hills, it's got low to the ground turns, it's got some very unique one-of-a-kind elements on there, and some filler elements in between. It's got airtime of all varieties, not just floater but ejector at some points, and even rides like Orion and Leviathan definitely pop some great forces as well. Though I do prefer the B&M Hypers overall as a ride, I think that overall when it comes to creativity, the B&M Gigas are the best and number one B&M model out there that you could ride for yourself. So which one of these models do you rank over the others? Now have you ridden any of these models? Have you ridden all of them? Let me know down in the comments below. This is Cedar Flags and I'll see you all later.